Me Before You, based on the novel by the same name, directed by Thea Sherrock and starring Sam Claflin and Amelia Clark. This movie, honestly, wasn't really on my radar, but I got an email about a free early screening, so I figured, hey, if it's free, what the hell? Overall, I thought it was pretty meh. Now, granted, romance movies are usually not really my thing, so take that for what it's worth, but as far as romance movies go, I didn't really think this was anything special, and I also have a few issues with this movie. Unfortunately, I can't really get into that without going into spoilers. So I'm gonna warn you right off the bat here, I'm not going to avoid spoilers at all. So if you don't want to see any spoilers about this movie, stop watching now. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, here we go. Sam Claflin plays this guy named Will Trainer, who is basically your average everyday Englishman. Filthy, stinking rich, lives in a castle, has a super hot girlfriend, more money than he knows what to do with, constantly going on these wild and crazy adventures all over the world. Okay, maybe he's not so typical. But one day, he is suddenly run over by a motorcycle, and bam, quadriplegic. No more skiing and skydiving for him, he's now confined to a wheelchair. And that super hot girlfriend has left him and is now marrying his best friend. He's seen better days. Fast forward a bit, and we meet Louisa Clark, known as Lou to her friends, played by Emilia Clark, which is a little confusing for the actress and the character to have the same last name. She's a somewhat klutzy girl from a poor family, desperately trying to make ends meet, and has been taking odd jobs here and there to earn what money she can for her family. She also has a douchey boyfriend who seems more interested in working out than spending time with her. I have no idea how these two ended up together in the first place, nor why they've been together for... I... I swear the movie said they were together for seven years. I find it hard to believe anyone would stay with this guy for seven years, but whatever. She somehow gets a job as Will's assistant, despite being horribly underqualified and having no experience whatsoever for caring for someone in Will's condition, but, you know, the plot says she must be the assistant, so she is. At first, Will wants nothing to do with her, or with anyone, really. He's kind of an asshole to everyone. But Lou is determined to make this work and keeps doing her best to get on his good side. And if you've seen these kind of romance movies before, you can probably guess where this is headed. Eventually, she does get on his good side and they end up falling in love and she dumps the douchey boyfriend, yada, yada, yada. Very predictable stuff. Until the twist comes in. It turns out Will has decided life is not worth living as a quadriplegic, and he wants to end it all. He has already worked out the details with an assisted suicide facility in Switzerland. I have no idea if Switzerland actually has such things, but in this movie they do. And he told his parents he would wait six months just in case he changes his mind. And when Lou finds out about this, she of course tries everything in her power to change his mind and convince him that life is indeed worth living, and it turns out she fails. His mind was made up long ago, and he only gave his parents six months in the hopes that during that time they would eventually come to terms with it, which ultimately they do, and Lou does as well, and they all respect his decision, and that's the end. Now, as far as the romantic angle of this movie and the whole, you know, person falling in love with someone terminally ill, that has apparently become a thing, like the fault in our stars, but how, how did that become a thing? I don't know. But anyway, for that aspect of the movie, I don't really have a huge problem with it. I mean, it's not my cup of tea, and like I said, the whole thing is very by the numbers, but there's nothing overly wrong with it, I suppose. It's just, you know, typical romantic cheesiness. And I'm sure there's an audience for that sort of thing. I am not part of that audience, but if the people in my theater are any indication, this clearly resonates with some people, because when the credits started rolling, I heard a lot of <sighs> in the audience. There was a fair amount of <sighs> whole lot of <sighs> going on. So either I was in a theater with a bunch of cocaine addicts, or this struck a chord somewhere. I do, however, have some issues with the way this movie chooses to portray people with disabilities. This is probably the safest portrayal of a person with quadriplegia 
that they possibly could have given us. Because, yeah, being confined to a wheelchair for the rest of your life would suck, and that would certainly be a big change from the way this guy used to live, but apart from that, this guy wants for nothing. He's still filthy rich, he still lives in a fucking castle. Not many people can say that. He's constantly being cared for by his parents and his own personal nurse who takes care of all his medical needs. Really makes me wonder why they needed to hire Lou in the first place. She doesn't really do much at first except make tea. And I'm sure it's an excellent cup of tea, but did you really need to hire someone for that? And yeah, his girlfriend left him, and that sucks too, but the reason she left him is because he became a raging asshole and drove her away. This is easily the best kind of life any quadriplegic could hope for. I'm sure this does not do any favors for anyone in the UK or indeed the rest of the world who suffers from similar disabilities and may not have access to the same resources he does. And I'm sure they would also not appreciate the idea that a disabled life is somehow not a life worth living, because that seems to be the attitude the movie takes. And because of all the advantages he has over the average disabled person, his woe is fucking me attitude rings a bit hollow. Yeah, that kind of change in your life would suck and suck hard, but you could have it a lot worse, dude. Maybe the book handles this better, I haven't read it, but the movie did not do a very good job of convincing me that his life was all that miserable. Sure, he says he's in constant pain, he says a lot of things, but the number one rule of movie making is show, don't tell. And it doesn't do a very good job of showing us that he's in pain. This is partly because he seems to come from one of the wealthiest families in England, and also partly because Sam Claflin only has two facial expressions in the entire movie. This, or this. That's about it. For that matter, Amelia Clark seems to have the exact same two expressions, except she cranks them up to 11, so it's more like this. It got kind of weird after a while. I swear, the first time she meets Will in this movie, she has that ridiculous smile on her face for a good five minutes straight, and the only movement we see it comes from her eyebrows. There's not a lot of emotional depth between our two leads, is all I'm saying. And as far as the whole assisted suicide angle, being able to choose when you die and doing it on your own terms and all that is a very complex issue, and it's something that many people have very strong opinions about, and by all means, it should be talked about, but you have to have a certain level of maturity to talk about it, and it, in a way, it kind of reminds me of when Twilight tried to examine abortion. And I'm not saying this movie is as bad as Twilight. It's not. <laughs> not even close. But, you know, you have to have a certain level of maturity to talk about that sort of thing. And Twilight did not earn that. And I don't think Me Before You has earned that either. And again, him being filthy rich helps him out a lot in this case because he has to go all the way to fucking Switzerland to do this thing, because I imagine they don't have any assisted suicide facilities in the UK, at least not officially, and the average person who might want to end their life on their own terms might not be able to afford such a trip since they don't have access to the same resources. This is made all the more strange by the movie's tagline, Live Boldly. Like, I'm gonna refresh the main page of their website here. What does it say? Live boldly, live well, just live. So basically, do the opposite of what Will is doing. Like, don't do what Tommy don't does. I'm, I'm getting some mixed messages here. He's not living boldly. He doesn't want to live at all. That's kind of the point, isn't it? His girlfriend Lou gets to live boldly, largely thanks to a large sum of money that she inherits from him after he dies. Doesn't seem like this movie is telling disabled people to live boldly. It seems more like it's telling them to go ahead and die already so us able-bodied people can get on with our lives. And I'd like to think that's not the message they intended to send, mainly because I'd like to hold on to what's left of my faith in humanity, but I could easily see how you can interpret it that way. And maybe this is just a case of the marketing departments not fully understanding the movie. I hope it is, but yeah, it's a bit troubling. Now, from a technical standpoint, there's really nothing wrong with the movie. It's shot well enough, 
And apart from the two leads, who could have used a bit more emotional depth, like I said, the cast is pretty strong. It's got quite a few people you'll recognize, even if you're not from the UK. Of course, Clay Flynn was in The Hunger Games, and Amelia Clark is on Game of Thrones. It also features two of her Game of Thrones co-stars, Charles Dance and Samantha Spiro, Doctor Who's Jenna Coleman, Harry Potter's Matthew Lewis, and a cameo from Joanna Lumley for some reason. I have no idea why she was there, but whatever. It's unfortunate that the story wasn't really good enough for this cast, and maybe there is a good story buried in here somewhere, perhaps if the writer was willing to take a few more risks, or indeed, any risk at all. As is, I found it mediocre, but like I said, this movie clearly resonated with some people that saw it, so it has an audience, it's just not me. If you suspect you might be part of that audience, then... I don't think you necessarily need to rush out and see it on the big screen, but maybe it's worth a rental. And if you're a disabled person, I'm guessing you're probably gonna wanna give this one a pass. And that about does it for Me Before You. Next time I talk to you, we'll be looking at those damn turtles again. We'll see how that goes. Till then, take care.